So I think in a sense, what I'm arguing here is that a lot of the work on anti-Semitism is descriptive. You know, we, you know, people are doing amazing work, for example, of looking at how in American universities, students and faculty, Jewish students and faculty are under threat. That there's scholars that are emerging at good universities and they're teaching horrible things about Jewish people. Horrible things about Israel. Dehumanizing Jews, dehumanizing Israel. And they describe it very well. But what I'm arguing is that why is this happening? Why is this taking place now? What are the economic, social, and cultural processes that are giving rise to these conditions in which anti-Semitism is re-emerging, and I think in a very dangerous way, and other forms of bigotry, of, of xenophobia, of racisms, of other forms of discrimination emerging in this context. And there is one sentence that you should, I think, um, remember after my, my, my talk, is made by Daniel Siboni, who is a physicist, who is, in, who is a philo doctor of philosophy, doctor of physics, etc. And it's this incredible, and it, and it summarizes exactly what I want to tell you is the origin of the hatred is the hatred of the origin. For several decades, gen uh, genocide scholarship uh, focused on the Holocaust. Only since the end of the 1970s, the, uh, the, the main or the, the, this uh, approach uh, broadened and started to look at other cases. And it became very dominant, became very dominant up till the moment that nowadays, and I'm sure that you're all aware of that, in most places people will speak about Holocaust and genocide studies together in one breath, right? And the question is if that is right. Every state in the Middle East, every state has to recalculate or to re-foster its strategy because many things that were very relevant for geopolitical consideration in the 20th century, all these elements have become null and void. You have to come up with out-of-the-box thinking, you have to fairly internalize the newly created situation and build up sort of an equation that would fit your uh, march for future survival or whatever it is. So you have to have that in mind because this is the outer circle. Every state in the Middle East, it could be Egypt, it could be Syria, uh, sorry, it could be um, uh, Iran, it could be uh, Saudi Arabia, each one of them having kind of a different calculus in line with those dramatic changes.